The One Micronesia podcast is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Half a day, guys, and we are back with another episode of the One Micronesia podcast. This one, very interesting because I get to sit down. I literally just found this um, Instagram page just weeks ago, and I was like, man, I have to get these guys on the podcast to talk about, you know, uh, the, the the things that they created and and what, what their uh, the products that, that they are you know putting out there for the people, especially for the people of Micronesia. Uh, so I have to reach out. So here with me on the podcast, our guest for today, we have uh, Mazel Higa Kazuma, a Palawan entrepreneur who makes traditional Micronesian dolls. Uh, and the company name is called Mad Look Dolls. So uh, Mazel, thank you so much for and welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Anytime. I mean, like I said, I right when I saw those dolls, I'm like, I had to reach out. These were beautiful <laughs> dolls, which had so much Thank you. meaning uh, to uh, behind it. So, like, I had to reach out and, and just hear the story about it, how it all started, and and where it's at now, and where you guys look forward to to bringing or to to, to bring the company and stuff. So, I wanted to, to hear your story. So, again. Uh, you're here on the podcast, and when usually when I start the podcast, I I get to know uh, who I'm talking to. Not because it, not mm-hmm. necessarily for me, but for the people out there who uh, might have heard of Mad Look Dolls or uh, finding literally getting to know, know it right now. So they want to get to know who's behind the the Instagram, who's behind the the beautiful Micronesian doll. So uh, Maisel, Thank tell you. us more about you. Um, okay, so my name is Maisel Higa Kazuma. I am from the island of Palau. Uh, I grew up in Saipan, though. So I grew up in Saipan, and then we moved to California. And then somewhere in the middle of all that, I ended up back in Palau for a year. And then I moved to Guam. And then from Guam, I moved um, out here back to California. So this is where we're at now. We've been here for like three years. Um, so let's, let's talk about that just a little bit. Um, so you were born okay. in Saipan. Uh, let's talk about yeah. how it all you moved there from the States <laughs> and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I was born in Saipan. Uh, my parents moved out to Saipan from Palau a long time ago. And um, so me and all my siblings, we were born in Saipan. And then like somewhere around 2001, uh, my mom got offered a job out here. So we came out here. I was 14 at the time. And it was like, it was actually really interesting because when you're like 14 years old and you move to a new high school in a new country, that's like culture shock to the max, right? Um, but I remember like thinking to myself, like, okay, I've always like been kind of this creative person, like with where there's my clothes or with things I make. So this is my opportunity to do whatever I want. So I dressed like however way I wanted. So I was always known like in high school as a girl who like, you know, took risks with her clothes because that was like my thing. I wanted to be a fashion designer. I thought I'm going to go to fashion school. I'm going to have runway shows. Like I'm just going to be like this girl that does that. I like clothes. Um so the only college I applied to was was a, a fashion college out here in LA and I got accepted. But my mom was like, you're not going because it, it was so expensive. And I just was so mad at her. She's like, just go to the community college and then like maybe you'll figure out something else. So I did that. I took fashion classes and I didn't like it. Turns out I didn't like clothes the way that I thought I did. Like to be a fashion designer or a wardrobe stylist or any of that, um, those kinds of jobs in that industry, you have to like respect clothes. You have to have a love for them. I just didn't. It was, I, I thought I did, but it turns out I didn't. And then, so like for so long, I've been kind of trying to figure out like, what is like my creative, um, you know, like what is that creative spark that I need? And so I was here, I was doing wardrobe styling. I was, do, I was doing photo shoots like out in LA. I was working backstage at award shows like I was doing all these really 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 cool stuff right especially coming from like a really small island not just as a Palawan but also like from living in Saipan I just never thought that I would have those experiences where I'm like backstage and like Jay-Z walks by or like Stevie Wonder walks by and you're just like oh my god pinch me you know because um it's just like really surreal but the more I did that the more I realized like I just didn't feel like a connection to it And now in retrospect, it's like when you're from these islands, like our beautiful homes, that's like really, you're always going to seek that connection. No, no. You're always, sorry, my kid just... I'll get, I'll get. (laughs) (laughs) Close the door, please. You're always going to seek like that, um, that connection, like whatever that void is. 
And now, like, when I think back, I'm like, okay, I really wanted to connect with, like, being Palawan because I speak Palawan. I eat Palawan food. I'm very, I feel, like, very Palawan. But I grew up in Saipan. And then I moved. So, you know, I had, like, the Saipan accent. Like, I moved to L.A. And then I, like, you know, got acculturated into, like, the Valley Girl. And so I was just kind of, like, looking for where to land, right? And um, so even with doing all these really cool, dope things and, um, you know, I worked for this jewelry designer and that's what like brought me to Africa. Like I, I just I've done things that are just that as a child, I wouldn't have thought I could do, um, but it just never felt like enough. And that sounds kind of, you know, not appreciative or, um, un, you know, you're taking things for granted. And uh, perhaps it could be that way if that's what I really wanted and I wasn't working hard for it or I was feeling this void, but I really was feeling like this void. So fast forward all that, 2011, I come back from Africa. That same year, I was like, I just want to go home. I want to go to Palau. I haven't lived in Palau. I lived in Palau for maybe five months, like in my whole life. So I'm like, I want to go live there. I want to be connected to the ground, to the ocean. Like I want to jump in deep waters. Like you know, I really felt like I needed to do that for myself. I wanted to, like, you know, talk to my grandpa and hear his stories because it's all about, like, storytelling, right? Um, so I went. I, I had $1,500. And I'm from the northernmost part of Palau. So I'm from Ngar Along. And so when I, I had my $1,500. And, like, all the times I would drive between, like, Koror, which is, the, you know, the, like, mm -hmm. the main town, to Ngar Along, like, I would buy snacks. And so, like, within a month, I had spent all my money on snacks my $1,500 I had brought with me um and so I knew I had to make money and I and my goal was to go there and make jewelry so I had brought all like these supplies with me so I was making jewelry while I was there like I was making jewelry out of bamboo um out of like whatever stuff I would find on the beach or in the jungle I was like walking in the jungle I was like looking for stuff I just thought it was so interesting that you could find all these random things I even like made earrings using fish scales like the old ladies were like, I don't know about that because the flies. I'm like, I cleaned it. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just like really trying to use whatever. Because there's so much money to be made. It's not even about money, right? There's so much that you can create when you're home. Like when you're in Palau or, you know, wherever you're from. Um, there's just so much beauty and it's so inspiring. And so that's what I was doing out there. Um, then I met my husband. I ended up moving to Guam. <laughs> <laughs> and that story goes like that I ended up moving to Guam um, and then you know we started raising our family um, I was a flight attendant for Cape Air shout out to Cape Air rest in peace Cape Air <laughs> so um, yeah that's what I was doing and, and like as we were, I was raising my kids I didn't I wasn't doing anything creative anymore I wasn't making jewelry because making jewelry is really hard it's like hard work and you're like cutting your fingers um, and you can't sell it for that much because there's so many other people making jewelry. And it's not just like local jewelry, but, you know, uh, westernized jewelry or fashion jewelry. So really it was just, there was no, like, I couldn't see that it would become anything. And so I just stopped doing that. Um, and then I was just raising my kids and I was, you know, making slime and we were drawing and painting and um, we were doing all that. And it just like instilled in them what I had in me which is the need to create so my kids are always creating stuff they're always making something like you know they were running in here because they're getting more paper um so they're always creating stuff so with the dolls it was that's like kind of how it happened um you know they're kids and they like stuffed animals and little dolls and I have sons but I don't like stop them from playing with dolls or you know if they want to mm -hmm. play with stuffed animals or dolls or whatever it's fine because they're you know they're having conversations and these dolls are talking to each other and they're creating like a world you know that they um are comfortable and i want to be in or whatever and so one night my son this was like in the in last november he was like i was telling him i'm like let's turn so like this painting right here he would draw like these characters right and i was like let's turn these into into dolls like these characters that you're creating, we get like different color fabric and we, I didn't know how to make dolls. And I was just like, I mean, it can't be that hard. Right. So, um, and he goes, mama, let's make Palauan dolls. And I was just like, oh, like that is wow. genius. 
ladies and gentlemen, we kicked <laughs> off this podcast, and we're just only the first part of this. And we I know that was really long. So no, which is good. We learned so much about uh, about Maisel and her story with, with, with her f- trying to find where she fits in with her creativity, and then just we mm-hmm. at the end there we find out how it all began. We're gonna take a break. But when we come back, when we come back, we're going to get to those dolls and we're going to talk about everything about the dolls, how it was created, the meaning behind it and everything. So when we come back, it's all about that right here on the One Micronesia podcast. Be brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Half a day and welcome back. It's the One Micronesia podcast being brought to you by Docomo Pacific. All right, let's get to it. So Maisel literally mm. dropped the whole uh, timeline on us, uh, her life. <laughs> and we learned a lot about that. Then she she met, you know, her husband. They now have a, a beautiful family. And that family, her kids literally gave her the idea to make beautiful Micronesian dolls. Uh, so Mad Look Dolls. And we're back here with Maisel. So Maisel, you, you talked about how it, you kind of like touched on it where, how it all started with the kids. We're going to mm-hmm. get to that, but Mad Look Dolls, why the name? So I have two boys, um, Maddox and Luca. So Mad Look is literally Maddox and Luca. Um, and it was my husband's thing. Like, so I'm just like kind of like the face of this whole thing, but it was my husband's thing. He's such a proud dad. And he, so he put their names together and that was his Instagram name. It was his name, and I had to be like, "Can I have your Instagram name?" Because I think I need to separate my regular Instagram and the dolls so I can keep track. Because I couldn't keep track anymore. Um, it was kind of like getting lost in the. So that's really what it is. It's just it's my kid's name. For those who are listening right now, uh, do you hand make these, or is it done by a factory? Um, so I make them by hand. Um, I. I have my sewing machine because uh, you I sew the body with the sewing machine, but then the rest of it is um, sewn by hand. Wow! So I have them. I can. I'll show you guys. <laughs> but then I think the beautiful thing about this is your your hand making each and every doll, mm-hmm. which means it has meaning, and you're actually sewing in some Micronesian love into each of different dolls. Yeah, I think that's so beautiful, though. Yeah, I think, you know, I like, I love storytelling. I love like when something has a story. Um, I guess you could say I'm a sentimental person that probably has a lot to do with like moving around a lot and having to say goodbye a lot. You tend to like attach yourself to the things that really mean something to you. Um, So for me, like with these dolls, when I make the doll and I know who it's going to, they've already told me their story. Um, That's really what I've kind of like realized in the last four or five months is, Everyone that messages me, like, there's a reason why they want the doll, and they and they want me to know why. Do you have a do you, yeah. you have those dolls? Uh, some of it that you could just show us just a little bit. Yeah. So I have one here. So this is a Palawan girl. So when I first, when I made the first girl, I had made a a male first. Um, I made a male first, and I wasn't like sure how I was gonna make the girl, but then I had a hot bath, a omagat ceremony so I just looked at my pictures and then I made her to basically look like me and this one isn't me but um but yeah so the skirt is just with yarn um that you can find because now people use yarn but because that's a long process Mm -hmm. and so they use yarn now and so it's really easy to buy yarn right so I have a bunch of different yarn and I just use that to create the skirts and then for like the top I learned like I watched a YouTube video on how to crochet because it was so hard for me to make the top I was like I don't know how to make it like where it's not where it looks like you know similar to what it actually is so I learned how to crochet so I could make that um and then you know she has a bunch the flower the hair is yarn and I I sew each piece of yarn on (laughs) because I just like the way it looks it's just like it's sturdier to me. I you can crochet them too. So I crocheted his hair, and it um, kind of looks more like an afro. It's beautiful. I mean, you, you're showing Thank us those you. two dolls, and uh, right off the bat, yeah. if you are if you're a Micronesian, it doesn't matter which island you're from. I think this is the this is the mm-hmm. one of the, the key things that make each Micronesian unique because at the same time they know how they call their culture is, but but they could also. Uh, tell who's from which island according mm-hmm. to their traditional attire so i mean and the colors too it, the colors too it makes it more real 
because you had it on point. Like, that's exactly the colors <laughs> of you know a, a traditional yeah. uh, a Palawan uh, attire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's like my goal is I don't want to butcher it. You know, I don't want to be like one of those people that um, does something just to do it. Like if I'm going to do it, if I'm going to spend all this time doing this, I'm going to do it as right as I can. I have to show you my Yappy doll. This one's my favorite. The Yappy doll, I just like love her. <laughs> She's so cute. And I got to say, like, I got to say. <laughs> yes. Like, Tell me about it. Tell me about the Yappy doll. I'm, that's... I'm gonna give you a hundred. So I'm gonna give you a hundred percent, a ten out of ten, on uh, on detail. <laughs> I had to learn because I, uh, like I said, like I need to get it as right as possible. So there are a lot of variations, right? When you look at like um, the attire on Google or whatever it is, somebody had messaged me with a picture, and but but I looked at other pictures and I noticed like all the colors are placed like this right so it's like green next to yellow next to red next to blue um it wasn't like random like there was like intention behind that and you know we're from small islands right so it's really hard to find information about our apparel like each item what it means online so i like these conversations because i get to learn like what this means and you know i'm just basing it off of pictures and then this i know um when they when it's a l actual lay it's like leaves are the ones on the outside and then like flowers on the inside so um yeah and then you know she's topless so she doesn't have her back is bare and then this is this was my favorite part so the skirt isn't just two layers from what i saw there's like three layers yep so the middle layer is green yes <laughs> yeah and i used um i didn't use yarn for this i used uh raffia but the thing about raffia, the reason I don't make them with raffia is because it's not gentle to the touch. So if a child has it, um, it could poke them or maybe not poke them, but it just doesn't feel like as good as yarn, right? Um, but I had to include it in there because I was like, you can't skip a detail. So I put that in there. That's crazy. <laughs> All right, you know, you know, yeah. uh, you know Maisel, we're going to take a break. We're going to take a break, and okay. when we come back, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to find out uh, a little bit about uh, what's next for Mad Luck, uh, for Mad Luck uh, Dolls. So when we come okay. back, we'll definitely talk about that after this break. Hoffa day, guys, and we're back. It's the One Micronesia Podcast being brought to you by Docomo Pacific, and uh, let's get to it. Now, Mad Luck Dolls. We started out as uh, uh, making Palawan dolls uh, in in traditional mm -hmm. Palawan attire, and then and then off to the next island, uh, the uh, Palawan neighbor, the the neighbor of Palau, which is Yap, and she made she did a great job in, in creating the beautiful dolls, which with beautiful Yappy's traditional attire, and then on to the the Chamarita. So you you started something that's going to be huge if you think about it and if you can <laughs> do it it's going to be huge in so many ways mm -hmm. and i think one of the reason is um you know growing up and i know six days during your interview with six days zero movement they talked about growing up as palawan kids you know uh when it's birthdays when it's it's a different when you're looking for a gift to give a palawan kid when you go to the stores back home in either yap or or or, or back home in palau or yap you know, the, the dolls that are there are your traditional Barbie dolls, your, mm -hmm. your action figures, you know, stuff like that, which is OK, man. These are Americanized um, uh, products that are being sold throughout the islands for generations and generations, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But we never saw something like this on, you know, the shelves. It's you, you yeah. never saw it until now. So <laughs> that was something that I felt yeah. was huge. And I'm also going to throw this one in because just recently uh, Disney teamed up uh, and, and, and made the movie Moana, which was a mm -hmm. international success. And now people are mm -hmm. like, wow, Islanders. Wow. Are all Islanders? Do they dress like Moana? I mean, <laughs> yeah. I love Moana. Like every single mm -hmm. island kid who saw Moana, and I'm pretty sure your kids too, felt mm -hmm. so inspired and felt loved and, and felt that love to be an Islander. And I think that's what that movie was meant to to do yeah and, a connection exactly and then after that you saw in the stores you all moana dolls i think that's one of the most you know uh sold products now when it comes to mm -hmm. you know getting something for your 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 kid either from micronesia polynesia melanesia it doesn't matter but you, you we always look for moana stuff but now yeah you're like whoa okay all right now <laughs> there's some micronesian stuff out there that people can reach out to you for. So 
let's talk about Mad Look Dolls and, and what does that um, you know mean to you when it comes to that whole idea of now you've created a doll that says Micronesia, Palau, yeah, right, you know Guam. Mm-hmm. Um, I just I didn't know I was going to do that, right? I didn't know it was I was going to reach people other than just my family or my friends. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about, I'm nervous because I make, like I talked about, I make them by hand. They take me like, I have kids, I have all these other things going on. So I don't make the dolls all day. And, um, when I am working on them, it takes me like, I challenged myself on Sunday. I was like, all right, for Saturday, I was like, I'm going to make, let me see how many dolls I can make. I could only make the bodies of two dolls, um, and the hair and eyes and just, just hair on one doll and then eyes on the both of them. But that was it. I couldn't make their clothes. And I was like, I mean, I had to stop and feed my kids and, you know, do all of that stuff in between. But I really forced myself to try to just work on it. And I could only make two in a day. So, um, you know, because there's other things going on. So they, they take me a long time. And I have people have said, like, why don't you get the manufactured? I don't want to do that. I just feel like as long as I can at least make them with intention um then it's worth like the time that I'm investing in it I don't really want them to just be in the hands of everyone you know what I mean then it just becomes like the doll that gets thrown out <laughs> the toy that you know goes and gets donated um because they've it's had its life I don't I don't really I'm not ready for it to be that way yet so I think as long as I have like some control over it and I can like manage my time and people are understanding that it takes a while to make um then I'm just gonna hold on to it and I want to make a doll for, you know, every single one of our Micronesian islands. So that's like, I want to make that. I want to do that so bad, but I have so many orders. So I'm like, okay, guys, um, <laughs> if it comes a little late, it's because I was busy making my Marshallese doll or something. So uh, that's really what I want to do. I really, really want to make a doll from each island. I want to take a picture of them all together. Like I want it to be this whole thing. I have all these ideas. I think what's really beautiful about this doll is um, I didn't, you know, you create something and then and then that's it, right? And you're like, so what's next? Like you're out of ideas. But this doll, like, has it's like the ideas just keep coming. They just keep coming, and it's because really at the end of the day, like you're just inspired by home. You know what I mean? Home is what inspires. You can go anywhere in the world. You come to the U.S. and it's like, oh my gosh, you have all, access to all these things. None of it matters if you don't have like that connection to your home, like where you're rooted where your family comes from, where you feel like you could see your auntie and see your mom at the same time. Like, you know, all of those things are so important to me. And I know they're so important to, you know, all of us, my Canadians. And so I'm going to hold on to them for as long as I can and make as much as they can. And, you know, it is my wish that I can get them into all of your hands. Whoever has this in order, I'm going to do my best um, in creating them, but they keep inspiring themselves. So before we like leave, I wanted to talk about the postcard that I had made. So um, in each box, mm-hmm. so this is just stuff with the doll, right? Because I'm extra, I, I make the box myself. And um, in each box, there is this postcard. Um, this is just, I took a picture of this, the buy in Palau, and then I put the dolls in it, right? But the reason I wanted to make a postcard is because when you like grab when you get the doll there's a story there's your story that goes behind why you wanted the doll right so then now you have a postcard and you get to tell the story to somebody else because we are storytellers our our culture is not written down in some you know tightly bounded book in a museum somewhere no it's told from our grandparents our aunties our uncles our parents and so these dolls give you i'm passing you the baton and then you tell a story so that you keep our stories going what does what does it really mean and it, it really just means like it's our story like these dolls are our story it's gonna take time which is fine which is really mm-hmm. fine as long as you you're still you, you have the love to, to, to continue doing it i think that's what matters most and we talk about love you talk about packing that package and you include that postcard you know you're mm-hmm. you're putting so much in that package that once the person receives it and opens it, it's not only the dolls that come out of it. It's the dolls. Plus, you talk about the, the postcard. You talk about sharing the story and sh- keeping mm-hmm. the tradition alive by sharing it through dolls. Like you said, that's how we've got uh, traditions passed down from generation to generation was through 
speaking now, you're kind of changing the game. You're putting it through dolls, things that will last, things that would, would stay on a, a shelf one day and some kid will walk in, some random kid and be like, what is that? What is that doll? I've never mm-hmm. seen that on the shelf at the store. And now they yeah. get to tell the story, tell, you know, the, the culture, the tradition, the attire, the reason mm-hmm. be- behind each attire. So now you're continuing yeah. that. That's that's beautiful. Guys, we're going to take <laughs> another break. But when we come back, it's all about closing out. So we'll be right back. It's the One Micronesia podcast being brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Half a day, and we're back. It's the One Micronesia podcast being brought to you by Docomo Pacific. And we're back to talk to pretty much close out the, the our conversation, which has been beautiful so far. I'm talking yeah. again with uh, Maisel, who is behind Madlook Dolls. It's traditional Micronesian dolls. So, uh, Maisel, wow, the story is beautiful. The reason behind the dolls, beautiful. So, in closing here, what message do you, would you have for, for people who are watching the podcast right now? Either fans, supporters. What message would you have? Um, I think it's just really important. Uh, for me, it's, yeah, the dolls are great. They're beautiful. They represent us. Um, but going back to really just trying to figure out what it is that you want to do, you just never know like what, what your creativity will spark, how it will affect people. Um, so I always think to myself, like time is going to pass anyway. So whatever it is that you want to do, go for it. Um, and that's really kind of like what happened with the dolls. I've just always like made stuff. And then all of a sudden, like when I started to make the dolls, it wasn't so hard for me to learn how to like create, you know, sew the dolls stuff because I'd just already been making stuff. So just go for it. I, I, it's so simple. Like I know life is complicated and things get in the way, but if you have an idea, I want to see it. The world wants to know, tell your story. All right, there you guys have it. It's Maisel uh, Higa Kazuma. Uh, Maisel, before we let you go, uh, social media handles, where can people reach you uh, to uh, talk about the dolls or order dolls? Um, okay, so my Instagram is at madlook. So it's M A D D L U C. And I'm pretty much just on Instagram. I'm a millennial. So TikTok and Snapchat, and that's a little too much for me. So just. Hit me up on Instagram, and um, that's where I take my orders. And then eventually, hopefully, I'll have a website. But um, you know, you'll find out if I when I get one through my Instagram. So I hope to talk to you guys, and thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. All right. Well, there you guys have it. It's Mad Look Dolls. It's Maisel Higa Kazuma. Such a, a such Thank an you. amazing. Uh, she's a Palawan entrepreneur who creates beautiful Micronesian dolls. So, guys, this, that pretty much wraps up another episode of the One Micronesia being brought to you by Docomo Pacific. We will chat, catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Bye. The One Micronesia podcast is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together.